All right, I'd like to welcome Linda Baker, uh, who is also here in Barnhart uh, at the Community Center. What is your, uh, I believe you said that you are actually with the Community Center. Yes, I manage the Community Center, clean, clean the whole building, clean outside, you know, keep it up. And uh, I live across the street, so it's real handy to come over and do the work. So you're a local as well? Yes, ma'am. Tell me your story. What have you seen over the last three years since the transloading facility has been in place? I have seen a lot of sand that has collected around the community building, from, you know, where the gra grass is. The mowing is just really hard to do. And it needs to be, you know, leveled off and new pavement put in, but we can't do it because the sand keeps drifting in and it drifts on the tennis court and, you know, you have to go out there and blow it off with blower every so often because it's just filled with sand. Now, at my house across the street, we've got my flower beds and trees around there. They're just, you know, sand nothing but sand and I've noticed that our trees and our flowers and our gardens this year some this summer seems like it just they haven't you know really perked up and and thrived like they usually do is that because of the lack of water or a combination with the sand or because of the sand I think it's because of the sand we have uh, access to well water and we can go out and spray the bushes off or anything and you can just see the sand coming off and you can see it when it goes into the flower beds. So I, you know, that just makes me wonder if that's probably the reason that everything's not growing like it should, you know, during the summer. So you, um, you're about two or three blocks from the I facility? Am, I am two blocks from the sand people. Of course, your blocks are a little different because going across the highway and the railroad right. tracks probably would be in Plus, city blocks another couple of blocks right. if it was cut out. Right. Now, the traffic is horrible. The uh, We have had trucks stop, pull up in front of the fire station, and we've got signs on the doors not to block the access. Oh. And they, you know, we have to go out there and tell them to move. There is... Uh, trucks just going up and down or just trying to park everywhere and on 67 in the mornings or afternoons or whenever you come through there's always trucks lined up along the highway just park and they're sand trucks because they can't get into the sand place fast enough and I don't know who where how all this sand processing started or who gave them the land to put this on, but they did not think it out. It's a horrible traffic intersection. It's a horrible uh, wreck just waiting to happen. We have, we've never had any wrecks right here at the intersection in Barnhart lately, but it's always somebody out there, a truck trying to turn when he shouldn't, and they don't pay attention. They don't look at what's behind them or little cars or even big pickups. They'll just turn where they want to. And they'll be lined up trying to get into the sand uh, processing place. And it's, you know, it just holds up traffic. It's a traffic jam. And especially when the train comes through. Now the train, every minute of the day, you can hear either the train at night you hear train whistles, you hear all the traffic, and it's real it's real hard to get used to so you can sleep. So it's I just think it was a bad place to put it in the first place. Now ten miles or so out of town along the railroad would have been a whole lot better because they could have easy access to the highway, but not right here at this intersection. Um how long, how many years have you lived here in Barnhart? I've lived here 33 years. 33 years. And I, we have our house and we were invested in, you know, the stuff that we have and we just hate to move. And my husband said he's not going to move, but 
you know, there may come a time when we're just overrun. And right now, that's what we feel like. We feel like we're overrun with trucks and traffic and people who don't care and how they treat our community. And it's it's just real. So know. it's no longer the barn heart that you've always loved and cared for? No. We cannot go outside. Uh, I have a patio that I could go outside and read any time of the day, and it would be clean at least not any sand on it. It might get dusty, but it would be clean. And I could go out there and sit. And now you can't because there's sand on the everything, on the chairs, on the porch, on the patio. Even the screens on the houses, on my house, you can see kind of the dusty part on it. And it's, it's just hard to keep clean. So it's a daily thing? Pretty well a daily thing, yes. Wow. Um, thinking about San Angelo potentially having a transloading, a frac, trans, a frac sand, I've said it too many times, a frac sand transloading facility in the heart of our city, what would you say to the citizens there? Oh, I would say don't let them in. Tell, tell them to go out of town. This is, it's crippled our little community, but in San Angelo where they want to put it, it would be horrible. It would be miserable. The people that live around there, they don't have a choice. They have to stay there. And it's going to just be miserable for them because this dust and the dirt, and if they have any kind of, of uh, oxygen or breathing problems, it's going to be horrible. And most of the people here that have been around for a long time, we've had two or three people already pick up and move because they just can't stand the sand and the dirt and the traffic and the, you know, all this stuff. And it's it's not a good situation. And I hope San Angelo does not, does not vote for put, letting them in. They can go somewhere else down the railroad. There's plenty of railroad space, but not in the middle of San Angelo. Has there been anything positive about them coming here? I really can't think of anything. Now, they do get good donations, but in, I just think that, you know, we'll have to use those for respirators one of these days, the rest of us that are here, because we've all developed a little cough or, you know, it's hard to breathe sometimes. And there's a couple of us that work outside all the time and it's just so dusty and dirty. And you know, you just breathe this stuff in and you just, you know that it's not good for you. So. Linda, thank you so much for sharing your story with us today. Appreciate thank it. Thank you for being here.